So this is my question on Saturday the 30th of January 2016. I'm standing just off Gibson Lane on what was the Kappa Pass site. This site is supposed to have been completely demolished and cleared and, according to the East Riding, had full remediation of the land. If that has occurred, then first of all, how come this building and the ones next to it are still here with the tanks and all of the equipment? And if you were in any doubt as to whether this was Kappa Pass and whether it belonged to dealing with chemicals and contamination and pollution, then there's the sign of William Jones, Chemical Engineers Limited, Westmore Street, London, with the type and the number of it on this piece of equipment, which has been left behind. This is Kappa Pass equipment, a Kappa Pass building in bonded asbestos. You can actually see the asbestos sheets and how they're breaking down. And it's all supposed to have been cleared and demolished and according to the East Riding and their evidence at Melton Fields inquiry and a single sentence in the statement of Alan Menzies on their behalf, there's supposed to have been remediation. Well, in which case, none of this should be here. One of the big concerns to do with the clearance and the demolition was to do with the asbestos in the buildings um, of Kappa Pass and also to do with the fact of people being able to come into the buildings and trash them. So, as you can see, because obviously it's dangerous to do something like that, we have got a building which is decomposing around me. We've got machinery left from the smelting works. We've got tyres, syringes and all kinds of waste around me, which has clearly been brought on by other people. And none of this is supposed to be here. So, it brings into question in my mind as to the reliability of the statements that the site was properly and adequately uh, cleared, the demolition was proper and adequate, well it clearly wasn't because otherwise this building and the ones next to it wouldn't be here, and we say, the Save Our Therapy Action Group, that there has not been any remediation of the land. It is not safe at all, um, and we bring into question the assertions that have been made on it. And here is the actual physical proof, 30th of January 2016, that it hasn't been done properly. How can you, as a public or a public body, say that the job has been a good one and that there's no risk to people and everything's absolutely fine when you have got such tangible physical evidence actually here in 2016, bearing in mind that the chimney came down and it was, I think, the 19th of February. So that would be, what, 1991, 92, when the chimney came down? So in which case, all these years later, you have still got very real evidence, I'm standing in it, of Kappa Pass. It's here. So how can one have any faith in anything anybody says when right under their noses, absolutely accessible to all, is the evidence that the job hasn't been done properly or job done at all. Because in the case of this, this, these buildings, this asbestos, um, the stuff around me now, and God knows what I'm breathing in, um, in terms of this, it clearly hasn't been done even as clearance and demolition. So I would say um, I could not assert that this is a proper or adequate job at all, and I couldn't place any reliance upon it. I would want full independent expert reports. And yes, the site is huge, and yes, it's massive, but says the chemical contamination, and this is a works which started in the 1930s, so it predates all of the legislation which we now have the benefit of, so nobody knows what they buried in the clay pits and put in the ground around here. Nobody has any records or accountability of what went on in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. When you get into the 60s and 70s, this is when the cancers started to come to light. And of course, we have got the evidence from the Health and Safety Executive of the tonnage of lead and arsenic and the chemicals which were on the roads 
and around in this area and the suffering from the people who were breathing it in and also the suffering from people who came with their children to picnic on the land because their, their um, partners and their husbands were Kappa Pass workers and of course they got a pass for it. Some of that land is now part of the Melton Fields Inquiry, some of it I'm standing on now and to me it is a job that was never ever properly done in the first place and we are all at risk of all the problems coming again if this land is not properly recognised as being extremely contaminated, if the proper testing for the right chemicals, because as the chemist has said to me, if they don't look for it, they won't find it. Um, and that includes the fact that you can still smell Kappa Pass. You can walk the other side of the site, which is Brickyard Lane, and part way down that there is a very strange smell. It's not sulphur, it's not soap, it's not sewage, it's very odd. And if you talk to anybody who goes back and remembers Kappa Pass, they go, that's Kappa Pass. Well, the reality is, is that is coming through the water table and evaporating up into the air. So if we don't have that kind of testing, then we have got all the particles in the air and that are still airborne that we are breathing in. And nobody's doing anything about it. The council does no independent testing. It has no means to acquire any of that. The government um, disbanded all of its unit that does independent testing and doesn't get involved and it's basically down to the developers. Well as we've seen from the Melton Fields inquiry, the developers work is completely and utterly inadequate and as of yesterday when I represented us at the High Court, um, I said in submissions in front of Mr Justice Oosley um, with the East Riding there, with their head of planning, their interim head of planning Stephen Hunt, um, his right hand man Mr Palmer, their council, Queen's Council, Paul Tuckers, they're fully represented, his junior. You'd got the Secretary of State's council and representatives there. You'd got St Modwin's council, his junior, um, Richard Bannister for St Modwin. And you've got um, Nathaniel Litchfield and partners who've been their agents throughout and gave evidence at the Melton Fields inquiry. Their solicitors, I said it in front of a packed courtroom, including our Save Our Therapy supporters. Um, I believe it is now agreed between all parties that this land is contaminated. It is the extent of that contamination and what should be done about it. And not one person disagreed with me. I waited and I paused for people to turn around and say, we disagree or not, and they didn't. And here we are. And here's some physical evidence the next day. I've literally just walked down here.